Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. Today we are heading out to North Aurora, Illinois, about 40 miles or so west of Chicago along the beautiful Fox River Valley. We're gonna hook up with the Nawarda Group. They contacted us about 10 years ago now to do a really cool water feature form. I was really excited about it because it was gonna connect children and people to the Fox River, which is near and dear to my heart. I'm a stormwater management guy and I love coming up with unique strategies that we could interact with the water. So instead of creating just a decorative fountain that everybody does, we wanted to recreate a little spring system that looks like it connects into the Fox River, but it actually doesn't. So with this system, we're capturing all the water off of the roof of the municipal building, and then we're pre-filtering it. We're storing it in an underground reservoir, then we're gonna recirculate it, we're gonna filter it through biological filtration. So this is a really cool project. This stuff, I love doing these projects. You're in for a treat with this one. I worked with uh, Nawarda, so the North Aurora River District Alliance. Yes. They came to us and said, we want to create a cool interactive feature for kids. Mm -hmm. They started looking at a section of the park over there. Okay. And they were going to do just a big fountain type thing. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. And the cost was insane. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're like, we don't have the money. We live along the beautiful Fox River. They're like, it doesn't really fit the look. Can we do something that creates an actual like a spring that you would find normally along the Fox River. Music to our ears. <laughs> and they're like, we want to create something. And actually the woman that's in charge, Jennifer, she has a decorative pond of her own. So she knew us. We met her through the Conservation Foundation. Brooke McDonald. Brooke McDonald. And she's like, that's the experience. She's like, I want kids to create a natural experience. 10 years ago, how long we do this? Yeah, About 10, 10 years, years ago. Yeah. And what's amazing to me, is that we have never cleaned it. No. And we were nope. talking about maybe because the kids are always in it, the water is pristine, everything is beautiful. Yep. It's been no maintenance for anybody <laughs> and it just goes. And it's part of the reason is because you put a giant wetland filtration system up here. Exactly. So can you explain to our viewers how this actually works? Absolutely. So this is an oversized wetland filtration system. Plumbing coming in on one side, we're discharging all that water from our reservoir, big underground yep. tank over at the other end, coming up in here and it gets filtered through. We have a sedimentation chamber on the bottom. Then we have different layers of gravel that come in here. All that water flows up through, cleans the water naturally. And right here is one of our snorkels. Yep. It's actually Ed's invention. Yep. And look at this. I can't believe this, that all of these years, nobody's actually <laughs> taken this and used it as a Frisbee here. And you know what, Ed, I love this. This is actually a good segue because so many commercial projects, the people think that you have to do concrete. All this is is our, our rubber liner and then you kind of put a geotextile fabric on top of exactly. it. Exactly, and we put a little bit thicker gravel bed. Uh -huh. So if kids are in there digging around. Which they should be. Exactly. What a great thing right for the community right awesome. here. This is the Fox River. It goes through all the way up, even by St. Charles where Aqualand is located, but people can't get into the river and interact. No. There's a solid border pretty much around it. Yep. Where this pulls it out and it makes it feel like they're interacting with water in a safe area. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all shallow water. The deepest water here is going to be eight inches. Kids can take their shoes off. They're invited to come on in, walk around, have fun, cool off in a hot summer. So this drawing, so this is the uh, the village hall. Which right here. That building over there. Yep. They wanted to show how people could actually make an impact on the river. So one of the biggest problems with all the water in the United States, actually for the world for that matter, the biggest challenge is stormwater. So when it rains on heavy surfaces, it washes pollutants into our river systems and our oceans. That's causing problems. So what we did here is we came up with a outside the box strategy taking all the water off the roof, pre-filter it right over here. So we have a series of downspout filters all along that building. We have hundreds of feet of pipe yep. that we ran all the way over into a 10,000 gallon rainwater system. Which, which means you'll never have to fill this over up. There. Still have evaporation, but that should go for a many, many months. Yes. This is showing our uh, little wetland filtration system. So our, uh, our wetland here, then that long uh, cascading stream, then the water returns back down into that storage area. So down in the bottom, 
This is our pump vault. We have our pumps down inside of here. The water gets pumped up to the top and it recirculates. The overflow for this, instead of that infiltration system, we turned it into a rain garden on the other side. Okay, so the okay. overflow for this goes yes. that way yes. and then from there it goes into the river. So right. we're constantly filtering, but it's educational. It's fun for kids. It's educational. It's good for the environment. I mean, it, it's, it's a, a run. It's a win, win, win. Everywhere. Yeah, more cities need to be progressive like this because it's, a, it's, it's conservation oriented and it's something that they can get and enjoy. And just adding on the bottom here, like a little fountain, yep. a little bubbling rock like this. Right. This just says kids <laughs> get in here and play. And this is what we need kids to do. They should be interacting with this, but this would not be safe if it was that giant river. This is completely safe, like you said, eight inches of water. This is actually overflow infiltration system, Correct. right? So there's a pipe inside of our rainwater capture system. So when it gets too high, it takes all that excess water over to here. This is all an amended soil. The water soaks down into the subsoil and then yeah. slowly makes its way out into the river. The way it's supposed which to. Which is the way it's supposed to. Instead of just having that torrent of water going out there, which causes flash floods. Talk about this because Ed, this is one of your favorite tops is the decentralized solution. So this is basically going back to the way things were 100, 150 years ago. Mm. So instead of having the water go into a storm sewer and stay in a pipe and then just move really fast, this is allowing that water to go down, uh, feeds the plants that are uh, that require that water, and then it slowly soaks down into the soil. This replenishes our groundwater. It's a shift in the philosophies. So we have to think of water as an asset, not a liability. So what you're basically saying is 150 years ago, they actually knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely Get back to the way our generation was. Absolutely, yeah. yes. All rainwater comes down off the roof, comes down into here, and then there's a pre-filter inside of this. So it's all loaded up with sediment and stuff, and then the water overflows out and it goes all the way over there, a couple hundred feet away into our reservoir. Yep. Well, that actually needs to be clean. Yeah. Hey, and here's my favorite thing. Check out this fish ladder. I can't even imagine. Uh, it's a, that's a torrent of water. Uh, if you're a fish, you're like, yeah, let me swim up there. Look at that. That's what they built that for. Them. I absolutely love it. I think my favorite thing about this is we're in a public spot built exactly the same way we'd build in a residential absolutely. neighborhood out here and it works, it's functioning, and it was less costly oh, than doing a, a standard a jet fraction. system over there. And a lot more fun. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. If you live in a community that deserves a feature like this, pass on this video. Let them know about this because it's this type of technology, outside the box thinking, that will really make an impact not only for the local community, but for the entire watershed. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next project.